What's up guys, welcome back to the channel. So the last time we did a roof, I had a bunch of people in the comments say that they would love a detailed how to prep the frame so that you can ensure a nice straight and square roof. Um, so make sure you guys watch this because you guys asked for this and I'm gonna go ahead and do it for you. So we've got what I would consider four major steps that you must follow to make sure that your building is square and ready for a roof. In my opinion, this is what's worked for us. So let's just go ahead and jump into step number one. So step number one is plumbing all four walls. So this is a simple square, actually rectangular building, but this is for any building. Doesn't matter if it's a house, a garage, or a post frame, or even a pole barn, you still wanna make sure that all your corners and your walls are plumb. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna bust out our Stabila plate level. And the reason being is that it's 12 foot from top to bottom. So when I check for plumb, I'm not just checking in a four foot section of a column, I'm checking basically in a 12 foot section. So you're gonna be a little bit more accurate. And okay, so we, I haven't, we don't even have any chains or anything holding this, but um, I'm gonna call that actually really good. But that's only one side of the wall. I need to go and check the other corner. This corner is good, that doesn't always happen. So what I need to do is I need to check the other side for the side wall. Oh, come on, <laughs> come on. All right, we're gonna go to the other end and we're also gonna, cause we gotta check and make sure in post frame, we're building a 60 foot wall. In stick frame, if you have a long wall, there can be growth either in the top or bottom plate probably not very likely in stick frame, but with post frame, when you're joining boards edge to edge, you can have some growth to the top. So we wanna make sure that it's good. And okay, we're gonna find a corner guys that's not perfect, but these two walls so far have been perfect. And I'm not lying, come here and take a look if you want. I mean, when you look at that bubble, it might be kind of hard to see, but uh, this is on a 12 foot stick and we are we're really good. So let's go ahead. We're gonna go around to this guy. Okay. Come on, dude. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so we built this last Thursday. Today's Monday morning. It's been sitting up all weekend and I purposely left chains off of it, which typically we don't do because we wanna hold the structure in place. Uh, but we don't have any chains on any of these walls and they're all, come on, dude. This is my, uh, this will be my last corner, Greg. If this is good. Oh, come on, we gotta have one that we gotta do a little bit of work to, hopefully. Just for you guys. Okay. I mean, even, even digitally, right? Look at this. So that's, that's kind of the giveaway. Digitally, we're at 90. So 90 from perfectly, perfectly level is perfectly plumb. And, okay. So this is what I was hoping. This one right here, when we look at this bubble, you can see it's just ever so slightly to that side. So we need to actually push this wall. This one is not perfectly plumb. So one out of four is not perfect. I can live with that. So let's go ahead and get our chains. I'll show you how we plumb our walls up. And it's gonna be a little bit different if you're not doing a post frame, you might have to use some two by four lumber and kind of rack it one way or the other, but you'll get the idea. All right, so we've got 50 foot chains and this was a big investment for me. I think each one of these chains probably cost me in like the, at the time, 50 bucks. I bet you they're $100 now plus binders. But what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna run a chain from the top of the post down to the bottom on an X. And we're gonna do this twice. So it's a good way to kind of get started in the morning. Just kind of climb your wall like a big ladder. Hey, Greg, are you going up top? No. no yeah, we don't. Way my top is. Yeah. All right. And then uh, you do the same thing because this is only going to pull me one way. But anytime we pull, we want to have an equal pull the opposite way. So now I'm going to take another chain. I'm going to come about 24 feet. Yeah. 
All right, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna use these binders. And trust me, everybody comes in the comments and they say, why don't you use those binders that like you can ratchet and get precise? Well, cause they don't work very well for this application. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take our chain Run it through your bucket handle here, or your jug. That way the jug doesn't fly away in the wind and you've got it for when you're ready to clean up. Let's see, this guy needed to go that way. So this chain is gonna pull it back, so I don't wanna put too much on it. So I'm just gonna snug this chain up for the time being. Too much. Greg, we're missing a hook. Hmm. Typically another hook on the end would be nice. But this will work. Okay, now this is the way I want it to pull, so I'm gonna go ahead and make sure it's kinda snug. And even that's not enough. Not enough. So I'm just finding where I feel like I'm putting some tension and it's not gonna take much cause there's not anything really holding these walls. Hmm. Might be enough. Let's go ahead and check this corner. There's really nothing on that yet. So we're at 89.95, not perfect 90. So we're gonna check this other side. If it also reads the same way, then we can move this just a little bit more. But the only way to have a square roof is to have perfectly plumb walls with a square uh, foundation. So this all really started at the foundation. We gotta make sure the foundation is square. Okay, I think I can go just a hair more this way. So while this does take a little bit of time, I mean, you gotta do it no matter what, you gotta plumb up your walls and this will make the roofing process much, much easier if you spend a little bit of time right now. That's what I'm talking about. Okay, so I know it seems crazy, but I'm still gonna walk down. I'm gonna double check that this one is still good. And Greg is uh, putting chains up on the other four, other three walls, even though they were good with the level, we still need to lock them in with a chain so we don't push and pull and move things around when we start working. Okay, this one's at 90, we're good to go. So I'm gonna check Greg's walls very quickly. Oh, look at that bouncing at 90. I'm gonna call that good. You got these locked in, Greg? You're locked in? Okay, so that is step one. We're gonna make sure that all four walls are as plumb as possible, and then we're gonna move on to step two. Dude, it's 90. 90. <laughs> <laughs> Now we need to straighten our fascia line here. And I know a lot of people will straighten their fascia or their wall, then they will snap a line on their over, I guess over long fascia tails uh, for their, their overhangs. And then they'll just you know cut them to an exact straight line. But we can't really do that in this instance in the way we do things. This seems to be the best way, uh, which is to install our fascia measured off of our wall with an exact two foot overhang. Now we're going to straighten these tails. So Right now there's nothing holding these posts from you know going this way or that way from side to side. Um, even though they look really good, we're gonna still run a string line because strings, especially on a nice calm morning, they never lie. So I'm just gonna take a 60 penny and for now, 
It's gonna hook this string line up to it. This is the string that we straightened our uh, post on the bottom at first. So we're just gonna reuse this. And can I drive this, Greg? No? All right, Greg says I can't drive it, so I'm gonna have to go down and drive to the other end. It's not very level ground. Okay, now on the other end, we're gonna throw another 60. And the, really the reason for a 60 is it's pretty strong, but also we can get the string line um, up off the fascia pretty nice. And uh, one thing that I need to make sure is that where my string is, this nail is, um, is in plane with the back side of the fascia. So I'll show you what I'm talking about. Put a little, it is very nice and calm. Okay, make sure this is nice and snug. So what I'm talking about is when I bring my square up from the back side of the fascia, you see how I'm hitting that string? Take my 60, just give it a nice little pull, and now I'm perfect. So what I can do is I need to now go back to the other end. This guy here, see how I'm just touching it? Give ourselves a little pull out. I'm good with that, okay? So now what I do is I do the same thing at every tail. There's only like eight of them to do it on, so we're just gonna double check. So right here, you see that? This shows me that this tail is sticking out. I need this to go this way, just a eighth of an inch. So Greg, we need a chain going back that way, which we knew that, right? Yeah. And it's, this, it's worse on the second one in, so let's put a chain on this one. Okay, so typically I'm gonna stay up here. I'm going to um, tell Greg where to put chains and then he'll set the chain and we'll push and pull this. But we'll go ahead and go down and we'll show you what we do to push and pull at least for one of these and then we'll come back up and it'll make sense as we run down this wall. All right, so the same way that we pulled our walls while plumbing, we're also gonna pull these trusses. So remember that truss needed to come this way about an eighth of an inch. So we don't need a lot. Even the weight of this chain might be enough just setting it on here, but I just spit everywhere, but we're gonna find out. So that, that might've been it. So it's not gonna take a whole lot. Let's go see what it does. So as Greg goes, goes ahead and puts another, uh, basically another ring on the chain, he's going to go up one more ring. Go ahead and tighten it up, Greg. All right, and you can see that I'm just ever so slightly kissing this string. So what we're gonna do is we're actually gonna use a wedge. And so when I say go ahead and wedge it, Greg, I already know through experience that one more chain ring is gonna be too much. And this is where a lot of people say, that's where you need one of those ratcheting binders. The problem is that is, that is a conceptually good idea. And we tried it like 10 years ago. And um, when you ratchet the binder on the chain, when it's just kind of free floating on like 30 feet, it, it basically spins the chain. And then when you're done, it unspins the chain. So it's just not as, it's not as easy as you would think. So what we do is we just know that we've got like, if we're within an eighth of an inch, we could probably put a link on the chain. If it's less than that, like this is right here where I'm just like kissing this string, Greg's just gonna throw a two by underneath the chain, creating pressure. Go ahead and give me a little bit more, dude. Mm-hmm. Stop. Okay. So now we're good to go. So we can do that on every one of these tails. Now this one was off a little bit, but now that we moved that one, it might have made us good. So look at that. Now we're not building a cabinet here. I know that if I'm that close, it's really not worth putting a, a whole chain up because I am, Look at this, just barely touching this. See that? I mean, it's just not enough. So now I think you guys get, this is step number two. Make sure that your fascia tails are all straight to your string line. I'm gonna run down this. And Greg, why don't you go ahead and put a, put a you're gonna probably need something on that chain right there. Yeah. They do look good. It just doesn't happen like this very often, especially on smaller buildings where you would think 
that they're gonna just be inherently straighter. It's not the case. Usually small buildings are a pain, and it's the big buildings that just fall into place. Yeah, this is the one, Greg, that needs to go that way. Yeah, so we're probably gonna need a chain on that. Um, well, the problem is we don't have it, like, we don't have that one locked in, so I'm, a f I'm wondering what's gonna happen when you, uh, when you pull that, is that gonna move that one also? Yeah, let's just see, well, let's just see what happens when you put a chain on this, and we might have to like release that, and maybe that'll be enough. An eighth? Yeah. You could, you could wedge an 18 back on the second, second one in if we have to, you see what I'm saying, from the outside? So why don't you throw a chain up on number three that we need, and then uh, if we have to bring two back, we'll just do it with an 18-footer. Yeah, leave that. I'm good with that. Good with that. Good with that. So Greg is gonna do kind of our other way of straightening a wall. And that's gonna be, because we're roofing this side first, we can throw some framing on the outside, which is very typical to what you'd see a lot of times in stick frame and a lot of other post framers actually, is they don't use chains, they just throw boards up. So Greg is gonna wedge this board and uh, we'll show you how we do that because it's, it's another good way to just move the wall ever so slightly if you have to. So go ahead and wedge that, Greg. Oh, you're, you're good, dude. Yeah. I mean, if you got a little bit more, go ahead and give me just a scotch. Hey, buddy, you got it. That, 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 no, too much. Oh, it might come out. Yep, good. All right, this is step two now complete. So we're gonna move on to step three, which is making sure that our peak is now square. So we've got all four corners plumb, we've got our eave straight, but if the peak is off, off square from our eave, it doesn't do us any good. So this is step number three, and honestly, I think one that a lot of people kind of skip is making sure that the structure is actually perfectly square. So let's go ahead, go up, and I'll show you how we do that. All right, so Greg is going to very safely and cautiously climb to the peak for now, and he's gonna take this tape measure. And we've gotta get a couple different measurements before we can uh, check for square. Three points of contact, my guy. Once he's up there, he's all good because he can just kind of sit there and wrap his legs around. All right, so first thing that we're gonna do is Greg is gonna hold me at one foot, and that's for accuracy. And then I'm going, uh, Greg, let's come, uh, let's come right in here. Over there? Yeah. Yep. Okay, we're gonna go right down our truss line and I'm gonna get a measurement to the end of my tail, which is 23.858, but actually that's minus a foot. So I'm 22, eight and five eighths. So I'm gonna set this here for a second. I'm gonna write that down, 22, eight, five eighths. Now what I need to do, is I'm going to get a dimension coming back this way, just ensuring 15 foot, which I already knew my fascia was a 15 foot mark right here, but just to be exact. And now I'm going to throw those two dimensions into my Construction Master Pro, 22.8 and 5.8. And I've got 15 foot run which is gonna give me a diagonal of 27, two and 11 sixteenths. And what we're doing here is the Pythagorean theorem. We've got 22 foot eight, five eighths up to Greg, and I'm 15 feet over to my mark, which means this diagonal is 27, two, 11 sixteenths. That's how I ensure that the end fascia up there is gonna be square to my eave. So 27, two, so it's actually gonna be 28, because I'm gonna add a foot, 28, two and 11 sixteenths. So 28, two, and I am actually 28, three and an eighth. So what that means is that this dimension is too long and I need to shorten it up, which we could see that because it sticks out. When I look up my end fascia, it looks like the peak is leaning out. So what I'm gonna do is we've already got peak chains set up on our peak. I'm gonna go down, Greg will stay there, and I'm gonna slightly move them, and I'm just gonna, let me, what was I, three and an eighth? Three and, an eighth yeah. and I need to be two and 11 sixteenths, so I need to move 
let's just roughly say three eighths of an inch. So because I want this peak to go this way, this chain is pulling back. I just wanted to feel how much tension was on it so that I knew if I was gonna be able to move it, but I'm gonna go up to this one that is all the way up to the peak and I need to make sure that there's pretty good tension on it because I need another, yeah. I think another bite might be too much, but we're gonna go ahead and try it. What do you think, Greg? Did you feel it? All right, well, you know what? I took the bite. It's a risk. I'm gonna go back up. I just try to reduce the trips up and down as much as possible because they take time. A third person in this instance is one of the few times that I really miss having a third person. Okay, so we're at 28, two and three quarters. So here's the deal. Is that 11 16 No. Is 11 16 and three quarters basically the same number when you're uh, squaring up a 40 by 60 roof structure? Yeah, it is. Because in order to get that 16th of an inch down here, I'm barely gonna move this up there. It just doesn't make a whole lot of sense to go up and down to chase a 16th of an inch. The point is you guys understand hopefully now the process for step number three to square up your peak. Um, you do whatever you want. If you wanna chase that 16th, Maybe when I was younger, I chased that 16th, but when you get experience and you realize that that 16th doesn't matter because there's probably an air somewhere else in the system, in the framing, in where Greg's holding, where I'm holding, where the stretch of the tape is, 16th of an inch does not, you're not gonna, you're just not gonna get it. So um, that completes step number three. So now we have the final step of squaring and prepping your frame for roof, and that is the end fascia. So. We've got our corners all square, it's plumb. We've got our fascia on the eave straight. We've got our peak right where we want it. But now we've got to deal with the end fascia. And if you look up the end fascia, it looks like we might just have to pull out the middle this way ever so slightly, but it ain't bad. So we're gonna get one more chain. I'll throw you the string. All right, so same, same process. We need, to, we need to move this cell little section, middle of this end wall out, maybe a quarter inch. So we're just gonna throw a chain on it and we'll pull the whole wall out. Mm, that might be too much. I don't know. All right, I'm gonna grab myself a wedge board. Greg says it's good from up there, but honestly, most of the time people aren't on the roof looking at the fascia, they're on the ground. So I always like to walk out and kind of look up the fascia. Uh, I would say it could probably go out a hair more. Hold on, let me look at the front because I wanna make sure that we're seeing the same thing on both front and back fascia. All right, so we've realized that uh, we're one purling off maybe. That's what Greg sees from up there. I can't see it from down here because I, the roof looks so flat. I can't get a feel on what purling is what. So Greg is gonna move the chain down one purling, which means I gotta move the bottom because it's gonna hit our, our wind tie up there. So if, you know, hindsight's 2020, sometimes you gotta do this sort of thing. You're not always lucky and get it perfect every time. Okay, so step one, plumb the wall. Step two, straighten the eave. Step three, square the peak. Step four, we just wrapped up, which was straighten our end fascia. All right, that is the straightening video. Hopefully you guys enjoyed that. Hopefully that's what you wanted because you guys asked for this video. So if you did enjoy it, hit that thumbs up. If you guys wanna see this entire build, I'm actually gonna put out a full time-lapse build of this 40 by 60 shop. So look for that, subscribe so you don't miss it. And uh, we'll catch you guys on the next video.